coming to the end, if I could just, because I, I did say at the beginning uh, this was both educative as well as a form of protest, if I could just take a couple of points here in relation to foreign ownership. The foreign ownership guidelines allow all purchases of Australian land, uh, any kind of property, below 231 million, I don't know where that figure came from, to escape any scrutiny from the Foreign Investment Review Board. And that means that what's happening with farmers is if farms bought up for five million here, six million there, eight million here, 10 million there, the aggregate could be a billion dollars, but the unit values don't require any authority from the Foreign Investment Review Board, even if they were any good. I'm not sure they are. The limit in New Zealand is $5 million. So if anyone purchases any New Zealand property, foreign interest, over $5 million, they've got to get approval from the central authority. I think we've got a little to learn from that as well. The other thing I would say is that it is one thing, with due respect, Prue, and you're doing a phenomenal job with hands behind your back in a way, it is true that the O'Farrell government banned, for example, uh, fracking and banned BTX chemicals, which are carcinogenic. That's true. But I'll tell you what's also true. No one's monitoring whether anyone's taken any notice. No one's monitoring. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the O'Farrell government has also done. It legislated that there be a mandatory 6% quotient in every litre of petrol, of ethanol. Not one oil company's taken any notice. Not one oil company. The figures are available. You can find out how much ethanol is contained in a litre of petrol. You go down here and see if there's any ethanol content. They couldn't care less. The fine for not doing that is $1,100. I mean, it's one thing to say we're banning all of these things. They're laughing at us. They're laughing at us. I wouldn't know, but I mean, BTX chemicals are four of the chemicals that are used in the fracking process. Uh, people that I have spoken to, scientists say there are at least 250 chemicals in that process which separates the coal from the gas and breaks the seam. So it's one thing to have, and, and part of the problem, of course, is that this government has inherited what I would call an absolute administrative mess. Nathan Rees created these ma massive bureaucracies. He amalgamated all these functions into one or two bureaucracies. And I've said to Barry Farrell, the first thing you should have done is dismantle all this nonsense. I mean, this is so critical that it can't be put under the umbrella of four departments, with Bill talking to Joe, Joe talking to Dave, Dave talking to Sheila, and someone then reporting to Brad Azar. I mean, it is, it is unwieldy, utterly unwieldy, because centre to everything we've said today is one key entitlement. What is your entitlement to have the final say over your land? That's the first and most important point that's got to be determined by government. Now, we all saw the castle and everyone laughed at it. And we thought Michael Cape was a comedian because, you know, the, the home was his castle and so on, so it's no longer his castle. They can come at you. There are rules which provide for them to enter. If you don't approve for them to enter, then you have to go to arbitration. Hello, a poor farmer, do you mind? He's got three kids, he's got a wife, he's got a farm to do, goes to arbitration. You can't go to arbitration, you haven't got a case. How do you put the case together? Or oh, employ some lawyers. Who pays the lawyers? He does. This is a nonsense argument. The odds are stacked hopelessly against the owner of the agricultural land. So it's pretty simple to say, here's a map of New South Wales. These are prime agricultural areas. You won't go there. Sorry, goodbye. I don't care what Christina Keneally or Nathan Reese or anyone else said. There's the map. There's the O'Farrell map. Prime agricultural land is quarantined. Urban land is quarantined. Go somewhere else. Look, you, you can't. This is such a battle. It's no use buying, buying your spine at Kmart. You can't do this with a plastic spine. And I mean, too many of these people are on the one hand and on the other hand. And you see, while the O'Farrell government, to be fair to it, has done all of these things, there'll be no fracking, no this, no that and the other. This is new development. We in this community, your electorate crew, are being belted by licences given by the previous government. We want to know what you're doing about them. Have we got the gut? Not you. Have we got... Pity it wasn't you. I've got to tell you, instead of wandering down there in the community services, put this woman in charge and it'll be a different kettle of fish. But what I'm saying is we've got to say, what are you going to do about the predatory behaviour of those people with existing licences? Drew talked about Ian Moore. 
in the Hunter Valley. That is an existing licence. That's a Labor government licence. The licences at Stroud and Gloucester, which are terrifying people. Can I just say something that I've been reluctant to say all day, but you will understand this. There are people, there are people in this fight who say to their husbands, I'm going up to the back to fix the fence. And they don't come back. They don't come back. Does anyone in government understand the emotional and psychological damage that's being done to people by all of this? These disgraceful, not for our use, we've only got 4% gas. And it's not for our use. This is to plunder Gladstone Harbour, build pipelines through other people's property, plunder the harbour, kill the marine life, dip, 40, dip 46 million cubic metres of soil into the harbour. All that stuff is dead. Jew gongs, fish, the lot. Don't worry about any of that. It's a quid because it's going to China to give China the cheap energy. We can't have it because we've got a carbon tax here. China the cheap energy. I mean, these are really serious issues, and someone's got to say, well, what is the property entitlement? I own the land, I bought it, there's my title, what rights do I have? You mean to say the Mining Act allows someone to come onto my property simply because he's found out, that something I don't know, that there are mining rights underneath the soil? And if not, we've got to arbitrate it. And he brings his army of lawyers, and he's got millions of dollars to spend, and it's a one-man show, I can't cope. Now, these are serious issues that have got to be addressed because people feel threatened and feel undermined and they feel white handed And so there are certain constitutional rights to property, property rights. This is what, with respect, you know, our farmers fought for. We, uh, farmers who went to war at Ackland and down here, they went to war to fight for the right to own this country, not someone else. Now, now, what we won at war, we can't win at home. The enemy is within. The enemy is within. I mean, this is, this is monumental stuff. And if we've, if we, now you're saying, oh, well, this is all going to happen for new development. I want to know, and I'm arguing, what are happening to existing licences? Is this open slather? And that's why the point that Drew has made is valid. The only answer, you're not going to get answers from policy. The only answer is to say we lock the gate and then we'll barricade the whole show. We'll gather people as we did at, at Spring Ridge. So. You know, I, the foreign ownership issue is a big issue. Can you believe that they're smarter than we are? This is food security, for God's sake. Are we going to be able to feed ourselves? The population of the world is about 7 billion. Reliable estimates say it's going to 10.6 billion. We should be saying how fantastic that is. We've got the best farmers in the world, the most efficient farmers in the world. My God, we'll feed the world. There's Asia up here. We've built a railway line from Alice Springs to Darwin. We've got nothing to put on the bloody thing. We could, in fact, water inland Australia, grow the best crops that we can ever imagine and feed the whole of Asia. We won't have the land. We're either selling it to Qatar or India or China or else we're letting them be plundered for, for mining purposes. You know, you're right, Prue. I mean, passion is important. Impatience is important. We, it's, it's five to midnight, people. It's five to midnight. The clock is about to strike here and all over the country. Ballarat, we're going to casino. Next. It's everywhere. Wait till I tell you, I could tell you what's happening in central Queensland, but I'll tell you what's happening in central Queensland. The properties are so big, and this is how they define what Drew's talking about. Drew says, I'll lock the gate. Well, some of the properties are so big, there are 20,000 gates. And they're coming onto the property unbeknown to the property owner at Bart Paul and Blackhall and these play Emerald. It's the best land in the world, along with the stuff that's here. So, you know, and I've mentioned earlier today about the, the compensation. And, and if, th this is my point. If we need the legislation that Prue has talked about, aquifer reg regulation and strategic land, it must mean axiomatically that there's something desperately wrong with the current system. So if there's something wrong with the current system, we've got to say, hang on, all bets are off till we sort out the problem. Don't we say that? All bets are off. I don't care whether you're old licensed, new licensed, or what you are. The very fact that the O'Farrell government has decided we need this legislation is symptomatic of the fact there's something dramatically wrong. So if something's dramatically wrong, we say, hello, stop. I mean, the, the same thing applies to a bloke who said, look, you stop drinking that stuff, you're going to kill yourself. Oh, well, wait till we get some tests. Keep drinking it. Get some tests, you'll be dead by then. 
I mean, this is where we are. We are five. We are five to midnight. It's your property. Remember what I said to you about the ethanol condom. I'm telling you, they don't care. They don't care. They're working on the fact two things: are oh, the government short of people, and the people advising the government are the same people that advised the previous government and led them into the kind of public disarray we've got. Are we in a crisis? Bloody oath, we're in a crisis. Do we have the fight for it? Certainly do. Do we have the energy? Yes. Do we have the time? We'll make the time. Do we have the people? We'll find them. Do we have the knowledge? Are we a step ahead of them? No, we're 10 steps ahead of them. We've got problems. I'm telling you, the message of today is their problems are infinitely greater than ours. Thank you for coming. Peter's going to wrap it all up. And, and we're very grateful for you being here, all those speakers. Uh, Bill, oh, you've stayed the distance. You're a good man. God, you're the hope of the side. Kathy, beautiful, beautiful. The women are fantastic. The women are tough. And the women hang in. Jeremy, good luck with the, uh, with the legislation in the upper house. Drew, you're an absolute star. You always have been. And you're a star now. Tim, thank you for coming. Uh, and the, Larry, great stuff. And thanks to the council for the work that they're doing. And Prue, all I can say is we're lucky to have you. We're lucky to have you.